Hey friends, it's Kip Icon, and welcome back to Kip Plays 50 Short Games. This is a collection of, like it says on the tin, 50 short games, all by Stephen Gilmurphy, aka The Catamites. He also made Space Funeral, which is one of my favorite games that I think I'm going to do a uh, Let's Play series for as well. Um, as well as Magic Wand, Goblet Grotto, and number 21, Tales of Terror. Skull, why are you so scary? Oh. Oh, it's a racing game! Oh. Oh, and I actually want to hit all the things. Okay. I th here I was thinking that I had to avoid them. I mean, this just feels surreal. I can feel the wind racing through my ha hair. Oh. Oh. Alright. We're a jumping car. With real excellent physics, by the way. Beautiful night. Yes. These tales of terror, time, truth, by told, test... These tales of terror, time, truth, by told, test... What? Thanks indeed. Well, that was Tales of Terror. In this episode... Oh, I forgot to say this at the beginning. In this episode, we're going to do games 21 through 30, but we're going to skip 27 because we've already played through Final Fantasy 35. If you missed that, that is in the first episode, so it's actually my favorite game of the whole compilation so far, but we've only been through page 3. We haven't even seen what page 5 looks like yet, or what the beautiful music in the background might sound like, but we can certainly wager. Wager a guess. All right, Operative Assailants. Here we go. Oh, Mogi, we've heard of Mogi before, Brain Lord, Cinderblock, Jenny, Car Car, Grave Gravo Boots, Robo, UFO, and Pete. I love Robo and Brain Lord and Mogi. Oh. Brain Lord, we need your brains to infiltrate the base. Understood. A subtrading computer network. How ingenious. You almost sound like you admire them. Fascinating. Fascinating indeed. Can I collect these? No. Wait, am I do I have to press a button? Or click? No. Uh I hope my cursor isn't showing up on the screen. I have it set to not. Bah! This tires me. I'm going to read crossword puzzles instead. Okay. Hmm, yes, clever. Most fiendishly clever. All right, and that was that guy. Come in, Agent Mogi. What is your location? I'm on some kind of freeway shoulder area. What? You should be at Enemy Command Center. I, th I think I took the wrong bus stop. <laughs> your backpack is filled with high explosives. Your mission? To blow up the computerized brain which controls the bio-missiles. Searching for restaurants. What restaurants? At the end of this corridor awaits an armed guard. Disable him with ninja cut. I see a puppy dog. Mogi, do you read? Do not engage with the puppy dog. Uh-oh. Oh, oh I, don't, I don't think we were supposed to do that at all. Cinderblock? Come in, Agent Cinderblock. Do you read me? Of course, I forgot. Remain in character at all costs. The dedication which makes you one of my top agents. Stay patient, Agent. Soon you'll be installed inside enemy base. Maybe as a part of a bathroom or an executive suite. Once there, you will feed us intel from within. I know an old hand like you is always itching for the fight, but in some ways, yours is the most crucial mission of all. Wow. Cinderblock, do you like me? A as a commander, I mean. Haha, <laughs> I forget. Your wolf forbids such banter. Well, carry on. Wow, that's an existence, eh? Agent Jenny here. I was circumnavigating the base when I came across what could only be implausibly referred to as a kind of spike maze with excellent physics. <laughs> there we go. A dense and thicket-like snarl of needles encloses a narrowing path. Extremely unhelpful for transport vehicles. I cannot see the use of this at all. Unless... <gasps> what? Oh. Nothing good is going to happen to any of these characters. Like Car Car. Car Car, are you completing your mission objectives? Pfft, no. What about the rendezvous with Dr. Toro? Whatever. I know that this is a difficult time of your life, but over and out, Car Car. 
Wow, that's that's a lot of existential dread for a race car. I didn't mean to be so harsh on judging car car. All right, Gravo boots. Ha! They'll need a higher wall than that if they want to beat my low grab jump boots with the shift key. Okay. Whoa. That was pretty impressive. I gotta I gotta admit. Alley oop. Careful, Gravo boots. Looks like they're testing some zero g. Gravo boots. Do you read me over? Oh no. Yeah. Nothing good is gonna happen to these little friends. Robo, hack in the mainframe. I am inside enemy computer system. And very cute. Loading enemy application. I've never seen a robot speak like that through text. I think that's great. Enemy appears to be playing a video game. But Robo, Robo, Robo. I missed the text there. I'm not sure what happened to Robo. UFO report. Currently monitoring Earth from deep space. As yet, no change. Well, keep looking. Over. Pete. What's wrong, Petey? They're locked. Well, you need to find a key then. Looks like we just have to bypass these very fast-moving spikes. Ah, Commander's log. Once again, we find ourselves in a stalemate with the enemy. It's their move now. A move that could cost millions of lives. But I'm not disheartened. I know my brave boys gave it their best, the very best they had to give. If only we weren't all morons. If only, if only... That's a lot of regret to have. And as my tattoo says, no regrets. Sea of love. Oh, this sounds sweet. Sweet little Muzak happening. Can we get this little seashell? No? Nope. Nothing? Nothing. This is our little house where we start out in. This reminds me of, like, how you might draw sketch out like a rough idea of what a game could be and then instead of refining that sketch and making something with polish you just use the original sketch oh we get to fight let's bomb okay or coin or banana did i do it did i i got a snail there's a snail what does that mean a snail with the zachary mask from off wait what we lost I think we lost. Yeah, I think we died. Maybe this time I will go north instead of south. And by the way, I totally approve of that idea to just take the sketches of the very base, basic of the idea, you know, and make that the game. I think that's an excellent idea. If that's the if that's what was done, I think it's very uh brave and conceptual and kind of punk rock as heck. It's an eyeball. I'm kind of not touching any of these things in case it's a fight and I don't know what I'm doing in the fight and I might die again. Oh well, let's touch well, let's keep going a little bit more before we go back to touch the eyeball. It's a sentence I never thought I would say, you know. Let's go back to touch the eyeball. Oh, what a face. Is that a, a face? There are hands as hair. Let's banana first this time. Then we'll bomb. And then we'll coin. How do you like me now? Now that I've done this thing. I don't think that that is... No, we, uh, nope. Well, how about this? Sea of Love. That's Sea of Love. Woo, we're gonna play nasty, friends. We're gonna play nasty. Once again, another sentence I didn't think I would say on the channel. Select a number. We could do video game, author's note, guide to interpretation by the noted scholar, synopsis for students, or study questions. Why don't we just do all of them, right? Number one, video game. I pressed one and nothing happened. There we go. I love you. Wait, what did that say? I didn't. And I fuck like a dog. Okay. This is a nice upbeat tune, isn't it? Much like that dog game, we see the catamites experimenting with the color brown again. Oh, hey, it's the bus. 
Oh my gosh, really? We have to wait for the bus? As this fantastic mouse man just hangs out? Once again, this is all too real. Alright, so let's go to author's note. Author's statement. This piece is intended for a single player and may be navigated via the keyboard and mouse. It should ideally be played in a calm, well-lit room, silent and empty but for the player. It is morning. The smell of fresh croissants wafts in from the street below. Perhaps there's also a fresh rose in a jug or a satchel labeled George. But George does not appear. I am indebted to the Guggenheim Foundation for financial support and for all my associates at the Irish Arts Council for their assistance in helping me secure funding. The game is dedicated to Nolan Bushnell. Stephen Gill Murphy, 5-11-2013, Dublin. Well, I... I don't know what to say. I, maybe we need a guide to interpretation from the noted scholar. Oh my gosh, the, look at all of this. Critical analysis by the noted scholar. Like Choo Choo Lane, who fought the sea, I have bade farewell. Wait, is that a reference to Tales of Games Presents Charles Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden, Episode 1 of the Hoops Barkley Saga? I wonder if it is. Anyway, like Choo Choo Lane, who fought the sea, I have bade farewell to those I love and, found my, and bound myself to futile conflict. The field of nothing much criticism remains a tumultuous one. Not since Mappy has a video game provoked such a myriad of readings. The unwary academic who seeks to delineate any one interpretation quickly finds herself in the position of the wily coyote who, seeing a clear road ahead, dashes his head against a painted boulder. Now wait, isn't it while... E period coyote like isn't it while the first name E is the middle name and coyote is the last name anyway I, I guess that's neither hither nor thither is it what follows are a piecemeal selection of notes upon the most striking or contentious aspects of the work presented here in the hope of enriching experience of the work and enlightening the lay player used in tandem with the student synopsis it may clarify some of the more complex subtleties of the game in question those curious about any specific reading can consult any of the works referred to therein for now i must humbly offer these offer thee this one small portion of movable feast on guard the critical overview re contains spoilers um I'm going to read that, but I'm wondering if I can go down or not. This up and down arrow, I think, is just to indicate that there would be more. If you could see more, yeah, there's no more. All right. Ahem. <clears throat> Pussy dot 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 dog, the animal symbolism remains among the most perplexing aspects of this game. The central character is, or is represented by, a mouse. He or she loves to eat pussy and to fuck like a dog. Their relationship between a mouse and a cat is self-evident, and its representation here in terms of inverted sexual transference relationship is both complex and inspired, a little mouse lasciviously declaring a taste for devouring cats. Similarly, a dog and a cat are proverbially, are proverbially linked. But what is the relationship between a dog and a mouse? Is the third leg is in what could otherwise be a self-consuming triangle of projections absent by intention? Certainty, or certainly it resists easy interpretation. But what is meant by this resistance? Is the breakdown of this self-contained metaphor a jab at, uh, a jab at solip solipsism, a reference to the fact that mental projections and fantasies can never definitively enclose the real? Is the dog a terrier? The mouse aspect is seemingly easier to interpret, contrasting... All right. Synopsis for students. This is what I'm most interested in. Just, I don't even want to play the game or read the thing. I just want to read the synopsis so I can discuss it in class. Get my, uh, uh, you know, um, my participation is the word I was looking for. Ay ay ay. All right, per participation grade. Synopsis for students. Level one. The game begins in media res with a close-up of a big mouse framed against a featureless black screen or void. The mouse has, I love to eat pussy, written on its chest. After C1 second, the mouse turns partway to the left, our right. After another second, the mouse is turned completely around to show the message, and I fuck like a dog, written on its back. After another second, C3 seconds total, the level finishes and it's on to level 2. Alright? Level 2. This area is depicted as a, at, a, at a static three-quarter angle. It is a little chain shop. The floor, walls, cash register, and cashier are all parts of one background image. There are shelves on a separate ca background image. The same mouse, question mark, is shown in this room, redrawn to a suitable scale. 
The writing is no longer legible as it is too small. The mouse can be moved slowly around with the arrow keys. It bumps into walls and shelves as well as selected background scenery. When you're finished regarding this area, grind into the alcove to continue to the next level. Did we miss that part? Level 3. We see the outside of the convenience store. There's a path, a brown road, some wire fences, and a grass patch. There also is a bus stop. The bus takes C30 seconds to arrive and stop, which triggers the next level. It is possible for the mouse to wander off the map, but doing so will accomplish little. We experienced that. Level 4. A large and crudely drawn apartment block is shown against a featureless black screen or void. The mouse is now very small. Movement is achieved as before. When it touches the house, the game will end. Okay, I, I feel like I, I grasp what's happening a little bit better now. Let's take a look at the study questions. Study questions, and, and everyone, after we read these, pause the video and post your answers in the comments below, please. Study questions. 1. Do you think the mouse is aware of what is written on its chest? 2. If not, what does it mean? 3. If so, how are we to deal with this? Did you pause the video and write your answers in the comments below? Oh, <laughs> good. I'm going to go ahead and give you my answers now. 1. Do you think the mouse is aware of what is written on its chest? I'm going to have to go with, he probably wrote it on his chest himself. So, yes, I think he's aware of what is written on his chest. 2. If not, what does it mean? I actually said, Yes, so this question is not applicable. 3. If so, how are we to deal with this? Well, I think it's a classic case of a, a mouse be living in a world where you have to tout being a little tough. You've got to fake it a little bit, and by writing I eat pussy on, my, on the mouse's chest, it can show cats that it's not afraid to stand up to them. I, for one, really kind of... Uh, I, I want this mouse to succeed. I like I like the message. All right, that was <laughs> nasty. Time for Doug Dot Zip. I was about to say, do I know any Dugs? But I think Doug Funny is the closest I'm gonna get to a. Ooh, I love this crudely drawn marker. Thanks for play. Oh. Just want to make sure we experienced everything there. I went in the car that time. This time if I go in the house, it is, uh... Oh, well, this is very much kind of like that other game we played where you could go in your house and go outside and do things in the world, which is, I guess, how... I guess is how most video games are, or RPGs, at least. Top-down perspective and all. All right, Stevenstown. Stevenstown! Let me tell you about the most wonderful place in the world! Okay? Let me tell you about the most wonderful place in the world. There is a place named Stevenstown, and oh is it beautiful. A network of interlocking grassy canals flow down and round the dense high pyramid of quiet, unpretentiously, unpretentious family homes. It's the Epcot of the Dublin suburbs, and did I mention the public transportation system is top-notch? All private traffic has been outlawed. It's the town where everybody knows his place. Now, earlier we noticed that they said that Stephen Gilmurphy worked from Dublin. I guess maybe uh, that's the case. Sounds like it, maybe. Tree-lined brick lanes wind round grassy interstitial zones and rows of houses. The roads are quiet, but the railway system screeches distantly in the background. In the summer, the canals are an iridescent green, and in the autumn months, the shedding of the overhanging deciduous trees fills them with twigs and dead leaves. You could call it a kind of Little Ireland, or more specifically, a Little Dublin, or, more specifically still, a concentration and recombination of areas from the following locales. Inchicor, Kilmainham, Crumlin, Talligat, Ballyfermot, Rathmines, Palmerstown, Harold's Cross, Dolphin's Barn, and Stevens Green. Haha, <laughs> very pretty, but what about the people? All of them over 50, all allotment-style old-timers. Nobody moves house or goes anywhere. What do they do? What would you need to do if you were tranquil? Yes, they are tranquil. 
There are also some girls, single girls, who nestle places in the superstructure. This seems like an appropriate point to bring up certain controversies which have lingered regarding the city. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. For one thing, the curious listed listlessness of the inhabitants. There is no art, no culture, no politics, no business, and seemingly no social intercourse in day-to-day -day existence. Inhabitants breed and die in the same houses all their lives. The absolute absence of social life or even mutual recognition in addition to the curiously uniform ages of the citizens also prompts questions regarding their methods of reproduction. Whoa! That sounds miserable. It's been suggested they sprout in dark rooms from an airborne spore. The resilience of the buildings similarly suggests a vegetative nature. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who could possibly have any issues with such a perfect walled garden? What's that? Alas, visas, there are no visas, you understand. Simply a, conser a conservation measure, you know, that no one can get in and no one tries to leave. Then how do I know all this? Yes, the truth. The one niggling detail of Stevenstown is that, of all the inhabitants, I am the only one capable of speech. I am the only one who can think and consequent in exile. But I am not unhappy. I know it endures, and besides that, I've always felt that true beauty ought to be impersonal. I suppose my question now is... Is that what Stephen Gilmurphy would would create as as their utopia? Why don't we play employee report? Like an octopus inside a coral reef. This is oddly soothing. I hope I'm not being lulled into a false sense of... Oh, I squeezed the whole of my body into the question of how much longer. How much longer what? I can lie here with my dick in my hand before it's time to go to work. Well, this got kind of dark. Wow! That was it. That was employee report. Why don't we liven things up a little bit with Moppy Returns, everyone. This is game number 29, Moppy Returns. You are Moppy. Get the keys. This is Crocodile. Watch for dark, Moppy. Press control. All right, control jumps. Well, I don't see how I can possibly get pet well. No! Wait, what the heck? Boy, I sure am exhausted. I should not be this tired at the end of a mission. I am thinking of consulting a medical professional. Wow. Dark Moppy is really scary. I find myself really agitated at this point because I really don't want to hear that sound oh my gosh just come take me just come I've talked it over with my shift supervisor and he agrees there's something wrong I spent all my vacation days on that trip to Portugal I like to book some time to get away each year it just breaks up the year please make it to the key moppy please make it to the key moppy no please no dark moppy please I enjoy collecting the keys and would consider it to be socially productive labor how else would people open doors? My brother has offered to let me stay at his place for a while, but I said to him, don't be ridiculous. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and keep trying to collect the keys. Whew, I was really hoping to, you know, have a little ray of sunshine, and that certainly was not a little ray of sunshine. Maybe creamers will be. It ends, ends with a Z. It's, uh, promising. Creamers! Yay! Ice cream! Another great day in the Taffy City. The Creamers are relaxing at their favorite location outside the Creamers store. Listen, I want to get together with all the Creamers. I want to see you all. You have the power to do anything. I believe in you. Store, beach, downtown, park. I don't know where I'm going. I just want to drift. Don't mind me. Dipped in chocolate, nice and crisp. You're so sweet, I can't believe we never talked before. I always saw you around, but I was too shy to say hi. 
Uh, I don't know where I'm going. I just want to drift. Don't mind me. Let's go to the beach. I'm melting in the sun. Don't mind me, babe. I love that you're so open about it. You just seem so relaxed. I don't usually let myself go in the moment. I'm really enjoying this. Please don't scoop me up. I just want to lie here. I'm sorry. Wow. Did we just witness the death of the protagonist? That's a little dark. Uh, location, Creamer's TM Store Exterior. I'm doing my quest. It's going really positive. Keep believing with all your heart. I know you can do it. The park? Oh, yeah. We've already been to the park. What about downtown? You're refreshing lime now. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to interrupt. I just want to be a good person. I'm just so happy that we're all together. I don't want to make a big deal out of anything, but I'm just really happy. You too can join the Creamers. Nine amazing flavors available now in stores around the country. Remove both the eyes before eating your Creamers. Dang! Dang! I'm spiraling, friends. I don't know. We have 50 of these games to get through. It's such a... A big undertaking. I mean, I'm doing 10 games per episode. I'm spiraling a little bit, though. This is kind of making me feel dread a little bit. Like, what's coming next? What else am I going to have to start questioning? Am I going to check all my ice cream for eyeballs? Are you, are you kidding me? Anyway, thanks for watching Kip Plays 50 Short Games. In the next episode, we're going to see what's on page four. I'm not going to press it or anything. I'm not going to press it. I'm not going to press it. I almost pressed it. Thanks for watching. I have been and I will continue to be Kip Icon as long as you guys continue to what? Follow your drams. Bye.